Okay, okay, I got a rant for all of you. I've got an amazing story here for all of you to hear about. Something I kind of touched briefly on a live stream, but I, I'm going to retell it here as its own video because I've, I've gone through some stuff here this weekend and I feel like I need to let some frustrations out into the world. First off, um, most of you know I drive 50 minutes to and from my full-time job as an electrician. I, I it, It's quite a bit of a long drive. And that racks up kilometers on a vehicle. And I'm at the point right now, the vehicle we've been using for this is almost reaching 200,000 kilometers, which, you know, for a vehicle is not, not really normal nowadays. However, it is a Toyota vehicle, so it does tend to last a lot longer than others. But that that milestone of 200,000 kilometers, you know, kind of triggers a few things and you sit there and go, okay, okay, I should probably get this vehicle in, get it into a shop and see if I need to come up with a maintenance plan to try and replace some parts on here. Um, I honestly think my starter might be going and it looks like I might be doing this by myself um, because I tried to get it into a shop. I, I did what every normal person does you phone up your shop you go oh i'd like to get my vehicle in it, you know it's doing these things it's been doing these things for a little bit um what what it's going on maybe maybe you can tell me in the uh in the uh comments what my vehicle is doing when it's from a cold start um i get in the vehicle i get onto the highway the highway ramps up to 100 kilometers pretty quick and if i you know take off right away don't let the vehicle warm up uh, it's been like plus five plus ten leaving work um so there's no real sense in warming the vehicle up but i get onto the highway and i i drive for a little bit i get it up to 100 kilometers the vehicle is a uh, high idle or high throttle at this point and will reach 4,000 RPMs. And in about 20 to 30 seconds sitting there, it will drop down to 2,500. And it's an instantaneous, you feel it go down to where it's supposed to be sitting, which is about 2,500. To me, that that is a warning sign that my timing is in need of uh, being looked at. and just something it's an old vehicle at this point it's from 2010 with 200,000 kilometers uh i i'm thinking i need to get it in for a service um and i'm dealing with other things like the ac unit the the air conditioning unit which isn't the worst thing in the world but when we get in the middle of summer here where it's plus 30 plus 35 degrees celsius and i don't have the ac pumping out cold air and i'm having to go down a highway with the windows down just to stay um cool enough uh, it's very loud on the highway and uh, I, I'm having to wear earplugs and all this other stuff. So I'm like, okay, let's get it in. I, I phone a shop. I book an appointment with the shop and uh, I take it in on Friday and uh, well, I take and drop it off actually Thursday night I, I for Friday morning. So I do all this stuff. I, I leave the vehicle there overnight. Friday morning, I get a call. I get a call from the shop saying to come pick up my vehicle, but not because they've serviced it, not because they've looked at it, because they are now telling me they do not have time to service it because it is between winter and summer or winter and spring season. So they are overbooked with people needing tire changes and they don't feel like going through and diagnosing any electrical or mechanical problems in a vehicle right now. They literally tell me over the phone, they do not have time to service my vehicle. This is the day and age we live in right now, um, up here in Canada, where there is not enough mechanics, there is not enough tradespeople to actually service a vehicle, and that the shops would rather sit there and make $70 on a tire change that takes about 20 minutes to do when the vehicle gets lifted off, off the ground, they'd rather make that amount of money instead of getting free money to try and do a diagnostic on a vehicle that I understand is going to probably need a few services in the next little bit. So now I'm looking for a new shop, but that's not the worst case of it all. The customer service I got when I went to go pick up my vehicle is absolutely abysmal. I, before I spoke to the manager, I got the keys to my vehicle because I could see my vehicle was parked out front. This way I didn't have anything left behind because I wanted to talk to their manager and explain to them 
that I had the opportunity to actually work at my job, which paid it only pays me when I'm there for the time. And there was the opportunity to work some overtime, which would have given me a little bit extra money in my pocket. But instead of doing that, I said, no, I'm getting my vehicle in because I'm prioritizing getting my vehicle in to have it serviced, right? I am believing that the service for my vehicle is very important for a regular maintenance schedule that it needs to be done. Throughout the pandemic, things kind of gets, gets away from you on a lot of things. So I, I thought this was a good step to take with my vehicle. And uh, the, uh, so I tell the manager this and I said, and then your tech told me over the phone, you guys could not service my vehicle because you don't have time. Well, this is where the manager turns to me and says, my tech didn't say that. The tech didn't say that. Okay. I, I turned to him and said, go talk to your tech. Go talk to your tech and ask them that then if you believe I'm lying. Right? And he's like, no, he didn't say that. Well, you know, this is at the point. I'm like, forget it. Forget it, you, you little fucker. At this point, you're screwing me and I don't appreciate it. And the guy asked me to leave because I swore on it, right? Fine, fine. You call me a liar to my face, and now I'm not allowed to swear at you. I get it. You know, I stormed out. I And, and while I'm storming out, there's a few people in the waiting room, and I told them, I just said, don't shop here because they will cancel your vehicle if you don't have tires to change. It's, it's an absolute ridiculous state that we're in for shops to treat you like this that mechanics don't exist to try and service a vehicle this was a simple service on a vehicle it was hook it up to the machine see if there's things going on maybe tighten some seals for my air conditioning unit refill it with freon and i'd be happily on my way if you tell me i need to come in for a timing change then we do that but no you don't want to take my money you wanted to throw me out of the store because i got upset for being called a liar that's not how uh customer service how anyone treats a customer in a store it's absolutely ridiculous to say this at least i'm leaving the the shop's name out of this because i don't want anything back i you know i, I I'm, I'm just doing this as a ranty sort of video anyway Let's fast forward. Let's fast forward to the next day, Saturday night. I'm like, okay, okay. It's warm enough outside. I've been wearing shorts for now a couple days. Um, it's like plus 14 outside. Maybe I will get the barbecue all prepped up after, of course, I had to sit there and service my own vehicle and do a few other things on it, like change the tires on my vehicle. I still have to go through the entire vehicle and figure out if there's something I can do, but I really do believe I need a professional mechanic to look at it over. Yes, I'm an electrician. Yes, I can look at these things. I'm mechanically inclined, but it also comes down to the time to be able to do that. I changed the tires on my vehicle in about an hour using the jack from the vehicle myself. It's not that hard for me to do that, but it's Saturday. I, it's getting to the point where I'm like, okay, we're going to move on. I can make some supper. I can fire up the grill. So I go and clean out my grill for the season. I clean it all up, get rid of all the, all the old carbon, get rid of all the old crap in there and look at the, uh, the, the tube rods in there that, that create the fire, that create where you put the fire, uh, for your grill. And lo and behold, a couple of them are cracked. Like they're cracked all the way through. I'm at the point where I need to replace them. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, Canadian Tire's right down the road. I'll, I'll pull one of these out. I'll go to Canadian Tire. I need five of them for this grill. So I'll, I'll be like, I'll go to Canadian Tire. I'll get the, the parts that are not rocket science to deal with the barbecue and put them in. And, and I'll have a good working barbecue for the entire season. And if not just the season, but for the next couple of years. So, you know, a little bit of money here. It's nothing major. I'm like, okay, how much are these things? They, they're a piece of sheet metal that's folded over with some holes drilled into them. They can't be that much. They've got to be mass produced. So I go to Canadian Tire and lo and behold, they're $35 a tube. $35 for a 15 inch metal tube that just has propane that you can put propane through and light on fire. 
$35 for one. And I just sit there, I, I I take a step back. I'm like, there is no way this is $35. These, these things are a few cents to make uh, in a manufacturer and they sell them by the one. They don't sell them by a multi-pack, no nothing that, like that. And I'm talking to the guy in Canadian Tire, I'm like, do you guys have like a multi-pack of these? That, you know, even at $70, it would be worth it. But no, no, it's by the one, you're paying $35 per one of these. So I need now, five of them so i'm looking at 175 dollars well at that point i might as well just buy a new damn grill but why why would i want to buy a new grill and throw up my old grill that the shell is perfectly fine on creating more consumer waste in this world this the, the, these are the things i'm seeing in the world right now and people wonder why our economy is tanking no one wants to do the work no one wants to sell a part that's actually affordable for people to do the work right i go on to amazon i find a five pack for 36 dollars. they're coming today so it'll be solved it'll be fixed um i it'll take me about 10 minutes to put in the new tubes i'm going to have a working grow by the end of today it's absolutely ridiculous that we go to the local hardware store and you can't buy these things for cheap because they're parts. I just went through this with our dryer in our house. I had to get a new heating element for our dryer. I found the part on Amazon for $40. I had to pay $200 locally to get this part. I live in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I mean, I'm one of the most northern, most populated cities of the north uh, of the northern parallels. And I have to sit here and go you you want to know why our economy is tanking you want to know why everything is so goddamn expensive because we're throwing everything out because no one wants to supply these parts and you wonder why amazon is one of the top companies in the world making money because no one is doing this amazon's got a warehouse here down the road uh just outside the city they they, they can fulfill this stuff in a day it's absolutely pathetic at this point that I have to sit there and and go this route. These things are not hard to do, but I'm also a tradesperson. And recently I'm finding out for every five tradespeople that are retiring, only two are entering the damn workforce. And you wonder where the crisis of living is coming from. Anyway, this is my rant for today. I'm your product Canadian Phoenix Cinder Shadow. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And hey, if you like this sort of ranty stuff, you, I, I think you gotta hit the subscribe button. Maybe leave your comments down below too. Thanks for watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day.